Learning TypeScript was probably one of the best decisions I have made as a web developer so far. Not only does it really accelerate your work, but it also makes you write better code and it makes maintaining projects, which is like a big part of web development as well, way easier and more fun. And all those benefits you get at practically no downside, because yes, learning TypeScript does require a bit of time investment, but it's really not that much. Okay, so let's get started with TypeScript in React and Next.js. And actually, it's quite easy. So let me show you the traditional approach of creating a React component. And that would be something like this or something like this, right? Where you, where you import React, then have a function that would be uppercase that returns some JSX, and then you export that as a default. And in TypeScript, that approach will be very similar. The only thing that's different is that we declare the type of the index or of whatever component you're making explicitly. So that would be FC and FC in React stands for functional component. And that is a type we don't need to make ourselves. We are being provided that by React. So we just need to import it and declare this component as a functional component. And that is all we need to do for that. We will get into props later. For now, I've prepared some code right here that we can paste into the return. And the server should already be started. Yes, it is. And there is a counter and a button that says add to count. Why are we doing that? Because I want to show you how to type the most common hooks. And those would be the state and the ref. Use effect is also a very common hook. However, inside of a use effect, you don't really need to worry about typing. Okay, so let's start with the state first. And what we want to achieve is like a number, one, two, three, whatever, showing up right here. And then when we add to count, that number should increase, essentially just what state does in general, but in TypeScript. So we have two, I'm gonna disable GitHub Copilot for this, just so I can type this myself. We will have the first value, let's call it count, and then set count from the state is equal to use state. We gotta import that from React. And then the state would be something like zero. Now, this is how you would type the state in JavaScript, right? In TypeScript, there is a small difference. You don't really need to do this with numbers, but it becomes very clear why we're doing this when we are working with arrays, for example. So what we're doing with TypeScript is inserting these angled braces right here that you also use to type, for example, HTML, like those um, triangles. And inside of that, we're putting the type that we expect the state to be. So if the state was something like, hello world, then that would be a string, right? So we would enter a string here. Or if that was a number, we would get an error right here because we're expecting a string. So that should match whatever is in inside of this state. Now, if we remove that, there's not going to be an error and the count is already inferred by TypeScript as a number. So when working with very primitive types like strings, booleans or numbers, we don't need to explicitly state the type right here. But if we were to use an array, right? Let's initialize a new state and just call it array. Not explicitly type the array, but just initialize it as an empty array. Then if you hover over the array right here, you can see the array is initialized by TypeScript as a never array. So what does that mean? It means that we cannot add anything to that array because by default TypeScript is like, what the hell, what is going inside this uh, array? Like it, it doesn't know what is going inside that array. So if we were to set array and then receive the previous state of that as the first argument and then do like spread the previous in there and then push something like hello world. So a string um, type string is not assignable to type never. So we're trying to push a string into an array that TypeScript doesn't know the type of. That's why it doesn't work. And in this case, while you don't need to explicitly type something with primitive types, you do need to type explicitly with arrays and objects, for example. So in this case, this would be a string array. We need to declare that in these um, angled brackets right here. 
and then TypeScript would know, okay, we're trying to push a string into a string array, and therefore that is an allowed operation. I think I got the point across quite clearly, so we don't really need to worry about that right now. I think you probably know how state works. Now, the other hook that we want to type out explicitly is the use ref. So let's insert a use ref and just call it something like div ref, initialize it as null, and also import the use ref from React. And that wouldn't throw an error. But as you can see right here, we have the div ref, and that is a React mutable ref object of null. And that might be a problem because if we're trying to use the div ref dot current, then that would also be, as you can see right here, if you hover over the types, it would be null. And how do we fix that? Because we can't really work with something that is null, right? The solution would be the same as the state. So after calling like a state or ref, we put the type we want in angle brackets. Now, how do we know the type of the div ref though? Because it doesn't say it here. One trick I've learned is that you can get a lot in TypeScript by just hovering over elements. So if we were to um, insert that div ref right here, for example, then we could just hover over this div and we would see the type of this div. So it's a React detailed HTML props. That's not relevant. What is relevant is this div element right here. Um, alternatively, for example, if you wanted to find off, out the type of the h6, take a look at this right now, and you could prop, oops, and you could probably tell me now which type it is, right? If we look right here, it's an HTML heading element, or if you go to the button, what type would that be? That would be an HTML button element. And let's say we wanted to um, assign the div ref to this div right here. So the ref would be div ref right there. And now the type for that, as we figured out earlier, just hover over the element and you can just copy the type from here, put that right there. And then you have a react ref object of an HTML div element. And if we take the div ref dot current, then you could also see it is either a HTML div element, right? This right here or before the component has rendered, it would be like null before the ref has initialized. And that is how you type the use ref. Now, arguably the most interesting thing to type out in TypeScript would be the props, because that's also probably for now the hardest part for beginners, but I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step and let's take a look at the props next. And for that, let's build a child component. So const child, which is also gonna be a functional component is going to return some JSX. And why is that red? Um, let's just return P for now. OK, that works. Um, and hello from child element, for example. Now, how do we pass this child element some props? The first way we could do that, first, let's just implement it right here. So just call it child element, and that will work. If we try it out, hello from child element. Nice, we can remove that. Now, how do we pass the child element a prop? For example, let's try passing the child something called a title. So we could destructure that from the props, right? Because normally in the React components, we just get the props right here. But what we can also do is just destructure them right away. So we'll get something like a title and that is gonna throw an error because TypeScript doesn't know what type of data will this title be. We know it's going to be a string, but we have to tell TypeScript that. Now, how do we tell TypeScript what kind of title this is, like a number or an array of some sort? The solution for that would be to insert these triangle angled brackets right after the FC, and then call something like, what I usually do is call it child props, like the name of the component and then props. Now, this doesn't exist yet. And there are two ways to initialize the child props, which way you take really doesn't matter. You could either use an interface and call it child props and then open an object that would need everything that you destructure from the props and type it right here. So the title, for example, would be a string. Now, 
you can also see an error down here. But before we worry about that, let me show you the other way of initializing the props. And that would be by using a type. And then that would be equal to an object. And then you would type out the title um, right here. Which one you take really doesn't matter. And now let's see what kind of error we have here. So property title is missing in type empty object, but required in type child props. So what does this error mean? Property title is missing in type empty object. So that means the child component is expecting something, in this case the title, that we are not passing from this index component. If we press control spacebar, we can also see what TypeScript is expecting us to pass to this child component, which would be the title of a string. Now, because we have um, typed the title explicitly right here as a string, um, TypeScript would not allow us, for example, to pass something like a number, and then it would be mad at us because type number is not assignable to type string. So what that means, what we're passing right here is not assignable to whatever we are expecting up here in the child component. But what if we wanted to pass something more complicated, right? I mean, it's pretty easy to just type uh, something like a string or number in this case, or a Boolean. That's not really a problem. But what if we wanted to pass something like a state, like a set state, right? Let's see how that would look. So for example, let's initialize a new state, call it um, foo, um, initialize that state just as a string, and that's going to be an empty string. And we will also have to import the use state from React. Now we can remove that. And what if we wanted to pass this set string to the child component? How would we go about that? Well, first off, we need to accept this in the child component. Secondly, we want to also type that. So whatever we are going to have here, we're going to see in a second. Um, let's just leave it at any for now. And now we can see that the child component is expecting something more. Everything that we set up here and right here. And that is the set foo. We're going to pass the set foo as a prop. Now, this would work, but in TypeScript, because you're using TypeScript, you don't want to use any. So how do we know what kind of type this foo right here is? Well, um, the trick I've showed you before that I've also learned from a tutorial is you can hover over some stuff and then you can see the type, right? So right here it says const foo is a react.dispatch and then a react set state action of a string. So we can just copy that, paste it right here and look at that. That fixed all our problems and that allows us to set foo right here, receive the previous argument, for example, and then, well, we don't really need to receive that. We can just set foo to hello world. And that works perfectly and in a type safe way because we defined the correct type right here. Let's see how that would look with a ref. So insert a ref, call it div ref again, initialize it as null. It's an HTML div element. How would we pass that? Well, first off, we got to import it. Now let's pass it right here, expect it right here and right there. Type it out as any. We can delete that. We don't need that anymore. Now, how do we know the type of the diff ref we're passing? You can just um, hover over the stuff and then you get react.ref object of an HTML div element. Just copy that. Oops. Just copy that copy and paste it right here. And that is all you need to do, right? You can just hover over stuff, see what type it is, and then um, type it out in the component that is receiving the props accordingly. And that is totally type safe. So divref.current is everything we want it to be. Okay, and now that we got the most important stuff out of the way, the final thing I want to show you is the little shortcut I have, which saves you a lot of time. It's the FC, which stands for functional component. And when I press tab, it inserts what I've just showed you right here, like as in its own component. And it uses the file name, so in this case index, as the component name. So if we were to go to um, create a new component, call it just hello.tsx and insert the FC, 
and it would be hello props const hello so it's just very convenient and I will insert the snippet in the description below so you can just copy it and I've done a video on how custom snippets work in this case you would go to your custom snippets and then it would be this one right here you can just um, paste it into your own global snippets or the TypeScript react.json ones um, no need to type it out yourself you can just copy it from me and then whenever you type fc inside of your components press tab then you'll have a really convenient and type safe um, you know TypeScript component ready so that was the last thing I want to show to you I really hope you found this introduction to React, Next.js and TypeScript useful. I hope I could help you. I wish you a lot of fun applying this to your own future projects and bye bye.